Hello, Loveland Magazine viewers, Cassie Mattia here, and we are here at the table of discussions without the table. There is a reason for that. We have some very special guests in the house today. Um, we actually have some humans and some fur babies today because it is Dog Appreciation Month. We're celebrating it now here in April, and here we are. We have some very special furry friends coming towards us right now. We have Callie and we have Angel in the house. And this organization right here is called Paws for Miles, an unbelievable organization that honestly, guys, I don't know a lot of people know about because I had to find you guys online, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> um, so we have Tanya and Jennifer here. To me, I'm already inspired by them, so I really want you guys to just dive into your story. But before we do that, I do want to touch on April. Every year is Dog Appreciation Month. And it's really a time to celebrate your own dogs, but also encourage adoption and encourage support for organizations like you guys, right? So let's kind of dive into what Paul's for Miles is and kind of why you started it. Um, whoever wants to talk, I don't care. I'm sure you guys both have <laughs> great stories. So you guys can tag team off one, each, one another or however you want to go. But I just want to dive right into it. Okay. Well, we are a foster-based rescue. Uh, so we don't have a facility, so all of our animals go into foster homes. We pull a lot from high kill shelters in Kentucky. We do take owner surrenders. We take in strays, um, hoarding cases. We, uh, we supply everything mm -hmm. that fosters need, the crates, the food. As long as we have it, we supply them. We are always looking for fosters, as since we are foster-based, um, and not having a facility, that's the only way we can help these animals. Um, the rescue um, initially got started. Um, I was actually um, the foster and rescue coordinator at the SPCA. Oh, and okay. um, so that it's a little bit how it, I had already started the process. Right. And Tanya and I had she was actually one of my fosters at the SPCA, and her and I got along great. And um, she's just she's just been amazing. And I asked her to come alongside and. Um, so yeah, so we've been doing the rescue now since 2017. Heck yeah, and, and, uh, and we need it. more of that here because as you guys know, Loveland's a huge pet population. Yes. And, and I know, and, I, and I'm not knocking anybody, but I know that there's a lot of parents that will go and spend three grand and maybe go across the country or go to another state, not knowing that there's beautiful dogs like this pity right here. Um, and remind me again with that breed, for it is a... She's a Doodle, Doodle Collie Mix. Doodle Collie Mix. Both very popular breeds that need saving. Mm -hmm. And you're Absolutely. not needing to pay three grand to do that. So something I want to want to kind of touch on, and it, it's eye-opening. Every year, 3.3 million dogs enter into shelters and 670,000 are euthanized. So if that doesn't tell you that there's dogs that need saving, I mean, you know, what doesn't? And so I love your guys' mission statement. Where we go miles for Paul's big and small. Kind of tell me how, yeah, lick my toes. I like that. <laughs> kind of tell me how that came about. Because not only is that catchy, but it's very hard to put what you do in like one catchphrase. How did you come up with that? Well, actually, Jennifer. Came oh, up Jennifer. With that. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. And it stemmed from how she had the calling in her heart to start the rescue was through a dog by the name of Miles. Miles, yeah. So it was a play off of his name. Okay. Um, we were trying to work his name into the, mm -hmm. uh, kind of into our tagline. Yeah, right. so, yeah. So yeah, so she came up with it and um, I don't know if you want to dive into Miles' story Heck yeah, now. yeah, we or... do because, <laughs> so, so as you, it's Paul's for Miles, right? But Miles is an actual dog, it's not Miles. So. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the story of Miles because, I mean, I, I know a lot of people want to know why did that dog inspire you guys so much? Well, um, Miles had actually came into the SPCA. Okay. Uh, there was nothing the shelter could do for him. So I agreed to foster him. Well, tell them why. <laughs> tell them how he came in and why okay. there was nothing they could do for him. So he uh, he was found um, on the side of the road. He didn't have any road rash, but he couldn't use his back legs. Oh. He had, um, somebody had cut his tail off. It looked like at home with scissors. Um, he had like rope burns around his neck, almost as though he had been hung from a tree. Oh my gosh. Um, he was just dragging his back legs, but no road rash. Could not figure out what was wrong with him. Um, so I took him home to foster, 
um, and he needed an MRI, CAT scan. He needed all kinds of things that the shelter could do, and right. uh, you know, other rescues were reached out could not do. Right. So. I reached out to Tanya, okay. and her and I um, were able to raise the money that we needed to get his, his the testing. Right. He was also going through water therapy. They thought that um, he was he was shot. Um, Jeez. So after that's a lot. It was. I mean, that's clear abuse, obviously. Yeah. You know. They thought he also had internal bruising, and um, so nine weeks later, we were finally able to raise the money. And um, during the process, we're going through, you know, getting the rescue established, but right. no name yet. And um, so he went out on a Friday, got everything done. Monday morning, they had the results. But at this point, he could feel everything, but couldn't move anything, couldn't even lift his head. And so he was shot. They could go in and remove the bullet, but um, what they thought was internal bruising was actually cancer. So if they removed the bullet, he only had a few weeks left to live. Oh my gosh. So the money that we raised that was left over for him um, is how we were medically able to start caring for dogs. So the rescue with all the abuse he endured um, is how we came up with the Paws for Miles. Oh my gosh. And he got the name because we were hoping that one day he'd be able to run them again. Wow. What that, I mean that alone, I mean that is inspiration. So kind of like with that funding and finding him, mm -hmm. it it's mm -hmm. it, what you're it's doing now, every basically. Night. Wow. Yeah. And and I do want to touch on, you know, you do adoption, um, you do rescue surrender services, but guys, they also do hospice service services, up-to-date health, nutrition, and care information, which I love, and vet referrals. So you guys do a little bit of everything. But one of the, just the way you guys put across what you do was just so unique to me. Just some of the stuff you had on your website, just this, for instance, provides them with a safe place, medical care, and finds them a loving, safe, happy, and permanent home. We are not a shelter. All of our animals are housed in foster's homes. That, I mean, that just tells me that you're not just trying to get rid of them. You're really focusing on, is this a good fit? Is this a good fit for the animal? Is this a good fit for the family? Mm -hmm. um, tell me why, unlike, I'm, I'm, I, and I'm gonna say this, unlike other shelters, rescue places, that nature, why are you guys so different when it comes to that? Why is your mentality so different? And I like it, so don't get me wrong, I'm loving it. But tell me why you feel so strongly about that. We hear that a lot. Yeah. From fosters and from adopters, that that we are different. And I think Jennifer and I are moms. There you go. I think it stems from yeah. the fact that- Human moms, right? Human moms. Okay, just making yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I think we take a lot of that nurturing that right that we naturally have and we just want the best for these animals and um we have seen some we we see so much suffering and i i think we know that if we can get involved that right. we can stop the suffering for that one right. animal right and so we take it very seriously and we want to know that they're going into a good home that they're being cared for um and that they're never going to face abuse again that, i mean and then so this, and, and I, I talked to you guys about this before the interview because I was so touched by it, but saving one dog won't save the world, but surely the world will change for that one dog. Where did you find that? Did somebody make it up? <laughs> I've never heard it, but I'm obsessed with it, and I want to create bumper stickers or something. So how did, how did that come about? I uh, came across it years ago, and it has always just stuck. I've loved it. I honestly don't know who came up with it, but it is just... Absolutely. Something to live by. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Oh yeah, did you just bite my toenail? Oh, okay, here we go. We. This is what the pitties do, the upside down. I've seen so many TikTok videos, so many uh -huh. videos, and they're like, this is what pitties do. They all do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Upside down, the zoomies, the, you know, that thing. Like, it's just hilarious. See, as you guys can see, this pit bull is not dangerous. So what we're gonna do is dive into the dangerous dogs list and kind of what that means. Get your guys' feedback on that. And I also want to know on, you know, that dangerous dog list, how many of those types of breeds you get in. Because I'm sure it's a ton. Yeah. So right now, Ohio Revised Code Section 955.11 defines a dangerous dog as a dog that without provocation has caused injury other than killing or serious injury to any person, killed another dog, or been the subject of a third or subsequent violation of Ohio Revised Code 955.22, now, 
based on behavior and not breed, previously pit bulls were labeled as vicious, but thankfully Ohio doesn't do that anymore. It's behavior rather than breed, but there's still a dangerous dogs list. I live in an apartment where there's still a dangerous dogs list. Um, and I, I've done a lot of research and we're still kind of, mm, 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 mm. so I want, I know, and it's, and it's an uncomfortable conversation because mm -hmm. a lot of people have different opinions on it. And, you know, I do feel for the people that maybe have had an unkind experience with a dog, but at the same time, you know, it's just like a child, a child could have an episode, mm -hmm. you know? So I want you guys to kind of tell me your opinion on that, about the dangerous dogs list, how you feel about that kind of thing. And, and is there a lot of breeds that are considered dangerous that come into you guys and did you place them? Cause I'm sure you did. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure they're happy now. So talk a little bit about that, both of you or either one of you, totally up to you. Do you want, you want me to start? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I think when you're in it every day, mm -hmm. like Jennifer and I are, you realize a couple of things. Right. One is every dog is unique. Um, so they really can't be categorized. Right. Um, some dogs are anxious. Some dogs are protective. It could be, I mean, how many, I don't know if I should say this, but how many labradoodles have mm -hmm. we had that bit people and that's yes. why we got them. Mm -hmm. But everybody has this image that a labradoodle is the dog they want for their family. Right. Where we have a dog like Callie that rolls around on the floor with Jennifer's little girl and has for the past two years. Right. And they're the best of friends. Um, but someone wouldn't have this dog, but they would get a Labradoodle right. that has bitten right. <laughs> before they would give a pit a chance. Right, right. So a lot of it is perception, um, we have found. And a, I'm just gonna say it, a lot of it is just uneducated owners. Yep. Um, yep. When you, like we have a dog currently that is an amazing dog that loves people, bonds with people, is, when someone adopts this dog, it will be a dog that they will talk about for years to come. Right. But we cannot get him placed because he doesn't like other dogs. Okay. And it's not necessarily the breed. He's a German Shepherd, a purebred German Shepherd. It's right. not necessarily the breed, but we've got to find the right owner for this dog. Right. This dog can be highly successful with the right owner. Right. And so a lot of it is I would really encourage people to really educate themselves. Yes. Um, do reading, yes. look into it more because you can find a pity like Callie that is the biggest baby yep. and you can find a Labradoodle that will, you know, bite a child in the face, right, you know? Right, so right. just do your research and, you know, be the kind of owner that your dog needs. Great and that's feedback. one of the thing that Jennifer and I see is oftentimes people treat dogs like children. Yep. Right. They are not children. They are dogs. Right. You can be kind and loving and giving to them, but they are an animal. They're not, they don't have human qualities. There's a difference. <laughs> yes. And I think if more people realize that, right. dogs would be so much happier. Right. People would be so much more successful. Mm -hmm. um, and you would be able to work through issues. When you have a dog that shows some aggression or shows some fear, a lot of times people just get rid of them. Right. Yeah. Not understanding that if they change the way they interact with the dog, the dog is the exact dog that they wanted. Right. But they don't treat the dog the way they need to. And right. then the dog ends up in, a, in a, like And us. there's a lot of times too, where we found that people want to surrender the dog because it, it did bite or, or, and we're like, well, have you taken the dog to the vet? No. And a lot of times they have something wrong. They have an ear infection. Right. And an so abscess getting, tooth. Yes. So they're in pain so and they're, that's why the aggression. Yeah, we had one that had stomach cancer and so it just, and it was a pit. Right. They had no idea. They just, you know, yeah. the dog bit, I'm done with it. And then it, you know, it gets marked as that, but then they're not doing. Well, do your due diligence right. and take it to the vet first. Correct. See Absolutely. what's going on. Yeah. So that, hey, mm -hmm. great. You know what? Great yeah. feedback. And that, I hope that hits home with everybody because what you hit on and what you guys hit on just now that is exactly correct in my eyes. And, 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 and like I said, you guys have a ton of experience, so I would take your feedback, that's for sure. So um, what I wanna hit on next is our babies that are in the house. So it, it looks like Callie's um, with the cameraman right now, <laughs> with David, but it, it, um, so let, let's talk about Callie and Angel. Let's talk about their stories. I, I just wanna hear their stories. Um, you don't have to go real, real deep into it, but I just want people to know where they've been mm -hmm 
and where they are now. Okay. Well, Callie um, actually came from a kill shelter. And she is pure pit bull, right? Uh, well, uh, she actually had, we actually had a DNA test done. Okay. And she's like 90% pit and 10% husky. Oh, wow. So, yeah. That's a cool, that's yeah. a cool mix. I haven't really heard of that. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yep. Um, so she, um, she was at a kill shelter with four of her puppies. Um, her puppies had ringworm. The shelter was going to euthanize as they were just completely full and the way the puppies looked um, and mom's breed. Um, and we got Callie up and um, we treated her and mm -hmm. her puppies and um, you know now she's all of her puppies have been adopted and, and she's doing great. And is she your dog technically? <laughs> because okay well th this is why I ask this because when we came in today, I, we looked at each other, and I actually took a photo of her and Callie um, at the food truck rally, the Loveland food truck rally, eating an ice cream cone, a Loveland Dairy Whip ice cream cone. And she was just pleasing all the people sitting there eating an ice cream cone. The photo was so well liked that I was like, you know what, we got to do more pet stuff. <laughs> so that's why I started the pet yeah. of the month, and that's why we're doing stuff like this. Yeah, we're talking about you. We're talking about you. So who? So she is adoptable or no? Well, <laughs> you're like oh, I, no. I would love for her to be adoptable. Uh, she still technically belongs to the rescue. I haven't okay. officially adopted her. My five year old and her are best Obsessed. of friends. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. best right. of friends. Oh, so, so I. Cute. I you're going back and forth right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah. Well, she was listed for a year yes. with really no inquiries. Correct. So after oh you have a dog for so long, yeah. They, yeah. they think they're yours. Right, right, right. That makes sense. And she's so good, and she dog tests a lot of dogs for us. Yes. Oh, my god. Because she's so well-tempered uh -huh. that when we have dogs that we're told are aggressive or issues are dog aggressive, right. we put them with Callie because yeah. Callie tells us if, if the dog is good or not. Did you all hear that? <laughs> The dog tester is a pit bull to test peppermint, okay, temperament, okay? I just I just want to make that clear, okay? Yep. You heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's dive into Angel, little baby Angel over there. So she's a puppy, right? She is. Did you say six? She is ten weeks. Ten weeks, ten weeks, mm -hmm. okay. Ten weeks. Tell her story a little bit. Oh, she's, yeah. oh, she's oh under, my she's gosh. She's under the chair. I did not even know she I was either. there. <laughs> what an angel. So talk about her a little bit. So Angel, a um, little bit different. So we had actually had somebody um, reach out in Kentucky. Uh -huh. um, they had Angel and her siblings um, and the mom. The owners wanted to keep the mom but could no longer keep the puppies. Um, the shelter they reached out to was completely full and they were going to euthanize them on intake. Um, and the owners just were done. There was nothing they could do, so they were just going to dump them. So we went down and got them. Uh, we also spoke with the owners and said that we would pay to have the mom fixed if they wanted to keep her so we can stop this, so she would stop having puppies. So she is actually getting scheduled. Um, she's actually scheduled for next Thursday to get spayed. So, um, so that's a little on their story. So yeah. Angel will be available for adoption in a couple weeks. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. And then, um, so I, I want to segue. So I found something kind of cute on your uh, website, Happy Tales. With meaning animals who have left their old lives behind for new forever homes. Mm -hmm. How did that, that that's kind of catchy too. You guys have so many, like, <laughs> you guys should be marketing people. Like, <laughs> some of these phrases, I'm like, dang, those are bumper stickers. Those are patented. Like, come on. So what, what's all, that all about? Happy Tales. That's cool. Um, Actually, I don't think either one of us came up with that. I think it was our IT guy, Kevin, that came up well, with that. Well, go Kevin. Yeah. Go yeah. Kevin. I love it. So so I found that, and then the, the story that made me want to call you guys up is courage. It's yeah, a, it's a, it's a tough, tough story to tell. Um, if you guys go on their website, I mean, it's unreal. The story is unreal. The photos are unreal. You guys don't have to dive too deep into it. Cause I know it's emotional, but kind of tell them who courage is and kind of that, that story touch a little bit. I know it's going to be tough, but you know, just kind of tell them, because I, I want to encourage people to let them know what, what these two women have done. And it, it's it, it's unreal. And this story alone, like, it, it, it's a tearjerker. So whoever feels like they can talk about it, <laughs> talk about courage. Do you want me to start? Right. You, you yeah. can interject. So Jennifer got a uh, reach out from mm -hmm. the SPCA. Um, they had taken a dog in that they had found in Price Hill, I believe. Yeah. Uh, they found it on the street. It was in very bad condition. Um, 
They got it in to do the exam and found out that its tongue had been removed. And he had bite marks all, all over him. All, and he was, he was covered, just, he was in really bad shape. So um, they called, they reached out to Jennifer and said, we need help. Mm -hmm. This is more help than the county shelter can, you know, they have so many animals they have to care for. Right. Um, and we went over, I think that day or the next day, mm -hmm. we picked him up. We immediately took him to MedVet nice. and um, admitted him and started IV treatments. But um, let me back you up a second. Yes. So as a rescue, um, and the only way we get any kind of funding is through adoption fees. Um, so we're always looking for donations. When we got Courage, Tanya and I knew we did not have enough money in the rescue account mm -hmm. to cover it. So her and I are checking our personal credit cards mm -hmm. to see what we can do to cover his expenses. Wow. So, so this was like a personal, this was a personal mission. It was almost. a dog in need. Yep. And yep. we were willing to do whatever it took. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, what breed was this <laughs> dog? He was a pit. A pit. So mm -hmm. once again, yeah. you know, so what ended up happening to Courage? Well, we got him admitted. We immediately started a fundraiser and the community stepped up. We raised several thousand dollars to be able to every day. We didn't know if we could keep him one more day. So we would tell our followers, we only have enough money for today. We only have enough money until four <laughs> o'clock and then we have to go get him. And he was not in any condition. We, we, he couldn't drink and he couldn't eat. Um, so all that had to be retaught. And Jennifer and I don't, did not have that special skill. Right, right. right. Um, we were not equipped with that. I don't think MedVet was even really no. equipped. Uh, but MedVet really stepped up. They, they were such a great partner during that. And uh, a follower said, you need to reach out to Marley's Mutts in California. Wow. They, they have a dog out there that also had its tongue removed. And I think they can help you. Well. We looked them up and found out that they're a, a very high-end rescue <laughs> um, with lots of funding. They have a ranch out in California. Oh, my gosh. And we thought there is no way that they are going to respond to two moms in Ohio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good old Ohio. Yeah. Um, and we reached out, and within a couple of hours, the owner <gasps> of the rescue called us and said, what can I do and how wow. can I help? Wow. And uh, we had not shared any of the photos of what Courage looked like because this wasn't that we weren't comfortable sharing what his mouth looked like yeah so we sent him pictures and he said that's exactly what happened to hooch a dog that he had at his rescue uh -huh. um and we ended up long story short we, we drove halfway across the country he drove halfway across the country and we turned courage over to marley's mutts and you can still follow courage oh my out in gosh. california he's living the life Holy. Um, at Marley's Mutts, and uh, Zach has done an amazing job with him. He eats, he drinks, and he's living the life of a normal dog now. And that's just pet networking right there. I it mean, it, it was unreal. That shows unreal. the pet community what they're all about, because yeah. not all communities are like that, different advocacy groups. Mm -hmm. You guys are willing to come together and do whatever it takes to, to save these animals. That, that alone just... So now I want to go into, we're going to go into a few things. Um, kind of wrap this up, but we want to give you guys the educational pieces where you can get involved, you can donate, you can join the team or volunteer, you can foster the adoption and the requirements. So let's talk first about adoption, the requirements, and fostering. How, how can people do that? Um, well, adopting, um, you do have to be 21 years old. You do have to fill out an application. Um, some places require fenced-in yards. We we don't require that based on the dog. Every dog's needs are different. Some dogs are meant for apartments, some are not. So when people fill out an application, um, we do check vet references, mm -hmm. we do verify with their landlord, we make sure that if they own their home, that there's no HOA, but it's based on a breed. Right. Um, and so um, we do, we try to match people up with the, mm -hmm. the dog that we think's fitting for them. Right, right. Um, and, um, and yeah, and so as far as our fosters, mm -hmm. fostering is um, pretty easy. It okay. is. It's an application you fill out, and um, we supply everything. Oh, great. Yep. Okay. So, and it gives people an opportunity to, you know, jump in and help out. It's a great service project for teenagers. 
That is. Or if you're unsure if you're ready mm -hmm. for a new dog or a puppy, it gives you a nice little trial to right. make sure it's the right fit. Right. And, and you're um, helping and getting correct. experience at the Absolutely. same time, which yes. I think is the best way to do it. I, I don't encourage anybody to go out there and just get a get a pet just because you want one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just and that's a good. Ex we do not do same day. Um, adoptions. Correct. So we're very unique that way. Yes, that is very unique. If we do an adoption event, we love people to come, but we need to get to know you. Yes. We need to be able to check your references. So we do not do same day adoptions, but we're very easy to, that is great. to work through the process. I, I think that's great. I think more places should do that because you don't, you can't judge. Yes. You can't judge somebody the first well, hour you meet them, you yes. know that it's going to be a good fit and whatnot. Um, so, okay, that's great. So now, now you guys know how to do that. Um, I do want to tell the people how to donate or if they want to volunteer, how can they go about doing that? Mm -hmm. Well, there's links on our website. Yeah. Which um, is, your website is? Uh, Pawsformiles.org. Pawsformiles okay. We're on Facebook. We do a lot on Facebook and Instagram. Yep. That's the best place to find us. Um, like Jennifer said, we are we adopt out our animals for what, we, we figured out what it costs to get them ready for adoption. And then we round it up. So on average, we would make 20 or $25 in adoption, which is not enough to run a rescue. Right. Um, so we're always looking for monthly donators, corporate donations. And something that Jennifer and I have been talking about a lot late, lately is we are now doing monthly transports down to Kentucky, um, up north, um, and we don't have vehicles to do that. So just even having a transport vehicle is huge for us because we have to go get the animals. We right. don't, these shelters are not bringing the animals to us. Right, right. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of things that go into running a rescue more than just medical needs. I mean, we need some infrastructure right. as well. So if people want to donate, is there a link? Do they mm -hmm. send it to you? How does that work? Mm -hmm. We are on Venmo, uh, PayPal. It's all listed on our website. On your website. Okay, I just yep. want to make sure that if yep. they if they just want to be like, I don't even want to talk to it, I just want to donate. Yes. Okay, yes. so there they we go. Do that awesome. From our website. I love that. I love that. So um, what I want to go into last, because we, we wanted to talk a little bit about the adoptable mm -hmm. pets. Um, we have five that we've talked about that are really, really special animals, but they are in need of being adopted. Mm -hmm. So we have Ash, Spyro, Annie, AJ, and Bruno. So let's start with Ash. I'm going to let Tanya yeah. do Ash. <laughs> <laughs> so Ash is a four-year-old, uh, almost five-year-old, purebred German Shepherd, male. Amazing. Absolutely fantastically amazing, loves hard, bonds quickly, and Ash needs a home with no other animals. Uh, Ash has a very high prey drive and needs a home with uh, no other animals. Uh, very, very loving dog and would do well with um, just a strong male owner. Okay. Um, just because he is a German Shepherd and he needs that guidance. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome, awesome. So you got Ash, mm -hmm. Spyro, Spyro is a three-month-old pit mix. He, um, he was found underneath of a bush out in the middle of nowhere um, and was going to be ended up at the shelter, so we intervened before he got there. Mm -hmm. And um, he's, he's just your typical little puppy. He gets along great with other dogs, gets along with cats. Oh, great. Um, so, there yeah, you go. Gets along with cats. Little puppy. We love that. So, okay, Spyro. Annie. Who wants to talk about Annie? Oh, I'll wow. let Tanya. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so... Annie is, we have a lot of people that are interested in Annie, but we, we're not sure that we have a lot of people that can, can really take on a dog like Annie. So Annie is um, half Bernese Mountain Dog, half German Shepherd. She's absolutely beautiful, very loving, but completely shut down. So Annie doesn't even walk. Um, when we say shut down, we mean shut down. Um, she needs, uh, she just needs someone that can help bring her out of her shell, have unending patience with her. And she does require a fenced in yard okay. because she does not like being, it's too much pressure to be close to people. And so she needs to be able to get away. Um, so you have to be able to have her in a yard where she can get away okay. to be able to use the restroom and run and play. She's not going to do that on a leash. She won't okay. even walk on a leash. Okay. But still a great, great animal. Just, oh my gosh. Hey, everybody has some, some quirks, some yep. personality she, traits. She just needs an owner that will give her time and bring her out of her shell. There you go. She's going to be an amazing pet for someone. Okay. Okay. And that's, and that's uh, Annie. So let's dive into AJ. Uh, AJ is an eight-year-old Chihuahua. Um, we got him, his owner had passed away. 
Um, and so that's how we have gotten him. And he is also gets along great with everybody. He's a little older, so I don't think, you know, he makes them not, everybody wants a younger dog. Mm -hmm. um, but he's got so much life. You would never know that he's eight years old. Oh, that's a, I kind of like older dogs. Yeah. yeah. My my uh, dorky is twelve, and he okay. he he acts like he's about two years old. Yeah. So I mean I'm I'm, I'm they're they're old spirits, right? Mm -hmm. Old yes. souls. <laughs> All right. So that was AJ Bruno. Final final. Uh, well, not the final adoptable pet, but the yeah. one that we're going to speak about. So uh, talk about Bruno. Bruno is a one year old pit mix. Um, we got him, his siblings. I think there were seven siblings. I think so. Oh wow. And his mom. Um, they were all also at a kill shelter um and i think we got bruno initially when he was just a couple weeks yeah, old very well, little the yeah. whole letter was um but he is i mean he is just a big big baby <laughs> big baby like you just and he is so cute but he, he honestly he he looks like he could have some mastiff in him as well oh wow okay but according to dna he actually has great pyrenees okay in him as well do you uh, typically DNA test most? No, you know? a lot of our fosters. Just if you're curious, do. Yeah. Oh, our fosters oh, okay, do a lot okay. Of them, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, that is. I mean, I. It's a good idea. Yeah. Just to just to figure it out. Yeah. Um. Okay. Cool. So th those. That's Bruno. That's our five adoptable pets that we kind of wanted to hit on. Um. But. You know, to, to really just finalize this interview here, I want to thank you guys, honestly, for everything that you do for the animals, for the community. Um. It, I'm sure it takes a lot of time and effort. But not only that, emotionally, I'm sure it's rough. I it mean, is. It, it's just like, you know, compared to humans, like working in the ER or something like that and just yeah. having to see that every every night, every day. But we appreciate you guys. And, and if you don't mind, I would love to read a letter from an adopter um, that got a dog from at the shelter. Didn't Absolutely. Didn't a breeder or anything like that. This was from her. Okay. Um, and this is just, we've had so many adopters reach out and just, it has done so much for them. Um, she says, the definition of rescue is an act of saving or being saved from danger or distress. In my case, it equates to Deb rescued Ace and Ace rescued Deb. Mm -hmm. I found Ace on Petfinder after a long search. He had such a sad face and was only three months old. He is now seven months old. Ace man, as I call him now, is a wonderful part of my life. We walk six to eight miles a day and go everywhere together. I don't know how he could be more perfect. Sadly, many great dogs don't have a chance because they were someone's failure or throwaway. Paul's from Miles found my treasure. I can never thank them enough for all the great things they do and for the lucky, lucky lives they have touched. Rescues and rescuees like me and my ace man. I had two daughters that I loved with all my heart that died and I was lost. Paul's from Miles found my ace and matched me to him and gave me something to train, something to love, something to have to hold. I will be eternal grateful. He is really, really something, and Paul Sir Miles not only saved him, but they also saved me. They will never know how much it means that they picked him for me. For, they were my Christmas miracle. Thank you so much, Deb and Ace. Oh my gosh. That probably made you guys cry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it did. And you probably get a lot of this. We do. We do. I mean, that's we probably do. just one out of the it, it is. 20s, 100s, who knows. Well, that's... You see, yes. and that alone tells you. But this is a shelter dog. That's what he done for her, you know? That, that's just, and, and it just shows that the right animals come at the right time to the right people, Correct. you know? And if more people could just realize that, you know, I yeah. feel like the world would be a better place. That's just yes. me. Um, well, I thank you guys, Jennifer and Tanya, for coming to us today, um, celebrating Dog Appreciation Month. For me, it's every month, just saying, but we'll say it's April. Um, but yes, <laughs> Please, please, please spend this month educating yourself, okay? That's the biggest piece of Dog Appreciation Month. Educate yourself. If you want a dog, educate yourself. Please, I encourage, don't immediately go out and go and try to find a dog in a different country, a different state, and spend all this money. There's local organizations like Paws for Miles right here. You can go down there. You can call them. You can email them and see their new pet. That's what, a couple miles away, you know, and save a life. So um, I encourage everybody to do that, and um, I appreciate you guys. Is there any uh, last words that you want to say to our community before we uh, sign off for the day? Adopt the we pets? Do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> we just appreciate you highlighting and spotlighting Paul's for Miles. Thank oh, you. absolutely, absolutely. And, and hopefully this gives you guys the awareness you deserve, because like I said, if I would have known about you when I first came to Loveland Magazine... <laughs> 
<laughs> you would have been here the first day I came to Love <laughs> Magazine. So, uh, well, I appreciate everybody in the community. I appreciate you ladies. And like I said, g go love on some fur babies. All right. We'll catch you guys later. This is Cassie Mattia, the Table of Discussions. See you next time.